Now let's create a camera. To do that, we go to the layer, new, camera. Now here we get to decide on a few options. The first one is what type of camera do we want to create? A one-node or a two-node camera? A one-node camera means that you're creating just the camera, and a two-node camera means you're creating a camera and a controller for what the camera is looking at. In most cases, you'll probably want to go with a two-node camera. Here you can name it. We can just leave it at camera one. And then you can select the lens size. The default is 50. I'm going to change it to 35 millimeters. And then you can enable depth of field, change the units or the measure film size. But don't worry, you can make changes to all of these later. For right now, I'm going to not enable depth of field and just click on OK. Now you see that our scene changed. I don't know if you noticed it, but the proportion has changed a little bit. And that's because we've created a 35 millimeter lens, which is a wider angle lens, and that changed the perspective. To see what I mean, we can go to our camera options under layer, camera settings, and change our preset to 50 millimeters. Now notice what happens to the scene. Now we're zoomed even further. And if we go the other way, we get to see much more than we want to. So I'm going to leave it at 35. It's going to hit cancel. And I'll rearrange the pillars since our perspective has changed. All right, this works. Now let's look at the camera options. First, we have transform. Now we can move the position of the camera itself from left to right or up and down and back and forth. Now you notice when I moved it right and left, it stayed in one place. It didn't actually move the camera. And that's because we created a two node camera and we have a different control for the point of interest. So the point of interest is gonna be what the camera is looking at. So if I move that, then we get much more of a dolly feel. But you can see that the camera stays put. The camera doesn't move with it. So if we want to move them both, we have to move each of them separately. And there's a better way to do that, and I'll show you that later. Then we have orientation, which is just another word for rotation. So this rotates the camera up and down, creates a tilt, left or right, or create a Dutch tilt. Then we have the XY rotation, which corresponds to these three that we just went over. That's for the transform of the camera, but as you'll see later, we're not gonna be touching the transform tools almost at all. And that's because we're gonna create a controller for the camera and move that around. But for now, let's move on to the camera options. We have a zoom option, enabling depth of field, and then a few options that work with depth of field. So let's turn it on. And we see that not much have changed. So let's increase the blurriness by increasing the aperture. Now the focus distance is gonna determine what do you wanna stay in focus. So let's bring it back and see when does it start to get blurry. Okay, so we see that our character has started to get a little blurry. So let's try to get only the pillars to be in focus. Okay, now the pillars are in focus and the character is a little less in focus. Let's try to push that a little further by increasing the aperture. Now to get a better view of the focus distance, we can switch to the custom view. And notice that when I move the focus distance around, we can tell exactly what's going to be in focus. Even better, let's switch to the top view. So here are our two pillars over here. And I'm going to move the focus distance to be exactly on the pillars. And now I'm going to switch back to the camera view and push the aperture. Okay, so I've exaggerated this on purpose, but you can see how these two are completely in focus while the character and background are not in focus. This could be a great way to create depth of field. Now let's do the opposite. Let's bring the character into focus. 
I'm gonna switch back to the top view. And I'm gonna push the background a little more further away so that maybe it'll get out of focus as well. All right, now our pillars are blurred. The character is completely sharp and the background is a little blurry. Might be a little too much. So I'm gonna bring the background closer to the camera. Now there's a few more options here like uh, the iris shape, the rotation, and you can play around with that. That is just a ways to customize your blur. You can also increase the gain and highlight threshold, saturation, that's stuff that you're probably better off doing in color correction. So now let's see how to create a controller for the camera. I'm gonna create a new null object. I'm gonna call it camera, camera control. I'm gonna make sure it's a 3D layer, otherwise it's not gonna work. And then I'm simply gonna parent the camera to the control. Now the cool thing with controlling the camera this way is that you can just move it around like you would a normal camera. It's a much easier way to move the camera around. You can still create rotations and interesting angles, but moving the position becomes much easier. So let's do something cool. Let's create a camera move. I'm gonna animate the position and I'm gonna start at around here. And over three seconds, I'm just gonna do a very subtle push. And let's see what that looks like. Now I actually moved the pillars a little closer to the camera to exaggerate the parallax effect. And I think we got a pretty cool result. The pillars definitely look like they're closer to the camera. And this creates the illusion of depth in the scene. Even though it's all flat layers, we feel like we're inside the dojo. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, but instead of a push, I'm gonna do a left to right move, a dolly move. I'm gonna start here. And finish here. Now let's see how that looks. I think that looks pretty cool. We get the parallax effect and all by separating these two pillars to a different layer. You can see how powerful it is to work in 2.5D in After Effects. So now that we have the camera in place, let's animate a shot. 